Welcome to Homeschooling Outside the Box, the podcast that encourages and equips moms who homeschool an outside-the-box child. Hey there, I'm Cindy Renna, and I'm so glad to be here with you. It has been a while since my last podcast, and it seems like life is just getting busier and busier. Um, We are still not totally past the pandemic, but it feels like, at least where I'm living, um, life is getting back to normal, which I don't know. I kind of have mixed feelings about. Of course, I'm excited uh, that it is, but at the same time, I think it was kind of nice when life slowed down a little bit last year, and we were home more, and now we are definitely at the end of that. So we've got lots of um, activities going on where I'm at now. We've got an end of the year celebration for our homeschool group. We've got soccer and dance and I I have one son who's in the theater and so he's got to play this summer and so lots and lots of fun stuff but um, definitely lots of running around too. So it's hard to find a balance. I'm sure you know because you, like me, I'm sure are a busy mom and homeschooling your kids and running from different activities and trying to make time for your husband and friends and all that. So anyway, today we are getting back to our homeschool rhythm series that I started. Um, if you're just joining and you haven't had a chance to listen to the others, you can link to them in the show notes. But We have talked about morning time, we've talked about narration, and now today we're going to talk about getting ready for your day. So this is a really important part of your homeschool rhythm, um, depending on what kind of homeschooler you are. You might be a little more structured or a little more relaxed, but at some point, it seems like in every family, um, everybody needs to get dressed and brush their teeth. So I think today will be relevant no matter what your homeschool philosophies are. All right, so let's begin. I have no doubt when my children are grown people making their own way in the world, they will hear the faint refrain of my voice when they roll out of bed in the morning to get ready for their day. Attitude, dress, bed. And again, after they have their breakfast. Teeth, face, hair, deodorant, zone. These have been the anthems of our mornings for years, and my goal has been to create habits to help them and myself get our day off to the right start. So if the phrase get ready sounds reminiscent of on your mark, get set, go, that's not an accident. Starting the day with a proactive posture is important. The day before us is a gift and the duty and stewardship we are bound to as receivers of that gift demand that we face the day boldly. A vibe of adventure and purpose can carry us through even the most mundane tasks. And let's face it, a lot of the things that we moms do throughout the day can fall under the category of mundane tasks. So this applies to us as well as our children. After all, if we are to train them in these ways, then we should be modeling them ourselves, right? But if I sound overambitious and just a touch unrealistic, just know that I don't usually wake up feeling this way. And I know that you probably don't either. So that's why the very first step of getting ready begins with attitude. So for attitude, that means you look the day in the face with right thinking, right heart, right motives. And this is not natural for most people. And I find that most days I'm dragging myself out of bed after hitting the snooze a few too many times. And I'm in desperate search of my French press. So getting the right attitude requires some work. So how do I make that happen? Well, for me, that looks like quiet time for mom. So in my home, we cultivate the right attitude of having a personal quiet time with the Lord. So for me, this is crucial and essential as a life preserver is on a vast ocean. Here's what it looks like in my home, but you can certainly alter it to better fit your preferences. For me, that means coffee, a candle, some background music, my Bible or devotional, a prayer journal, a regular journal, a growth book, and a book of mottos. All right, now let me break all of those down for you. 
Uh, sometimes I'm outside on my porch swing and the background music is the chirp of birds and chattering of squirrels. Other days I'm curled up on a wingback chair with a blanket and hymns playing quietly on my phone. Some seasons my devotional is a quick bite from somebody like Sally Clarkson, a verse and a thought to ponder throughout the day. Other seasons I read systematically through the Bible using a resource like N.T. Wright's For Everyone series. And sometimes I have time for both types of books. Some days I pray for ongoing issues recorded in my prayer journal. And other days my heart is so heavy with immediate needs from myself and my loved ones. And that takes up that time. There are days that I journal in my nature journal. And sometimes I record in a diary. And other times there just isn't time for deep reflection. My growth book is always focused on a topic I feel God is wanting me to grow in or further develop. So like my homeschool or my own issues or pursuits or challenges that my kids are facing, this book is always nonfiction. And it's a choice that I hope will move me in a positive direction in an important area of my life. Uh, You notice I have completely avoided using the phrase self-help and that's on purpose (laughs) for a reason. So I think a lot of times self-help books, um, they, they can get a bad rap, but I, I think there's a danger in, um, having all the focus be on how can I make myself better without acknowledging that we should be, um, taking a cue from someone that someone being bigger and more powerful and wiser than ourselves. So of course, Um, For me, you know, that's Jesus. I want to take my cues from the Holy Spirit. And so if if I say, go read a self-help book, that can mean something very different than what I'm trying to convey, which is I want you to, you know, be prayerful about how is God wanting to stretch you in this season and what book might help you to, to grow in that area. Okay, I am a firm believer that we should read something worth writing down every day. So when I find a worthwhile morsel, I put it in my book of mottos, as Charlotte Mason called it, or you can call it a commonplace book or a quote book, whatever you want to call it. Uh, This book becomes a valuable piece of literature in its own right, and it's fun to pack this in your purse for quick reading. If this seems like a lot in the morning, let me assure you it does not have to be. So you could spend even one or five minutes on each activity I just listed and give yourself an excellent start to the day. More often than not, when I wake up drained and discouraged, God works through my quiet time, filling my pitcher and giving me an overflow to pour out for my family and loved ones. So it is well worth filling up. Um, That would be like saying, well, I'm late for this appointment, so I can't stop at the gas station, even though my tank is on empty. Well, clearly, if you run out of gas, it's going to take you even more time to get where you're going. So I kind of look at my quiet time like that. If I'm already on empty, the rest of my day is just going to drag. So it's well worth spending the five or 10 minutes I can in quiet because that will, um, that will help a lot. Okay. So now let's talk about quiet time for the kids. As my children got older, I began to encourage them to have their own quiet time to help them get their attitudes ready for the day. So their day usually begins sitting on the fireplace. So um, for our family, that means I, I put a comfy blanket down by the fireplace and a book basket next to it. You want to watch your kids and see where they naturally gravitate and then try to put resources in that spot. Um, So whether that's the fireplace or a chair, a sitting area, beanbag, whatever. Okay, so then I had each of the kids pick a book that could help them grow spiritually. I've got these books listed on my complete book list. If you go to my website, and I'll try to link to it in the show notes, you can get access to my book list for free. And so they're listed um, roughly by age or, um, or years. So it's important that they choose the book, but I will say I... I grabbed about 10 books for them to pick from so that um, they kind of picked within my choices. Okay, so one of my teens is also doing a prayer journal in the morning to help him with his anxiety, and he's found that to be very helpful. 
So what's important to remember about quiet time for your kids is that I offer, but I don't dictate resources. So their quiet time with the Lord is exactly that, theirs. They must take ownership, though from time to time I will gently question if they've had their time, if I haven't seen them doing it. Um, And they need to work on their relationship with the Lord on their own terms. So I don't read their journals. I don't micromanage them in any way because the two key factors to a quiet time is that it's personal and it's quiet. All right, next is getting dressed. Now, I know this one is pretty self-explanatory, but I am going to mention that my kids get themselves dressed with no help from me beginning at a very young age. Um, Another perk of homeschool, I guess you could say, is there's a little less pressure uh, based around what they wear. But I I think the other thing is that my goal is ownership. So um, the flip side of that is that I don't criticize or micromanage what they do choose Although I do make a general announcement about what the weather is going to be like for the day. Um, Even if they come out ill-prepared, they figure it out, and then they make adjustments as needed. Okay, the next is bed. Again, self-explanatory, but with a note. So I teach them how to make their bed when they're very young, and then as soon as they're able to, they take it on by themselves. Yes, this means their bed doesn't look perfect for the most part. So for my less than detail-oriented son, whose brain runs at 100 miles per hour, this means that there are pillows stacked quickly and a comforter is clumsily tossed on top of those. There's no top sheet. He has no desire to keep up with one, and he's comfortable with a couple of blankets at night instead. So that's fine by me. Now I have another son whose bed is pristine each morning within a minute of him getting out of bed. It's the first thing he does. The point is that they're each taking responsibility for what is theirs, and this is not an area where I'm going to nitpick. Whoever is Kid of the Week does bed checks for me. If you don't know what Kid of the Week is, I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, So they're in charge of bed checks, and I take their word, and then we move on, and we have breakfast. Now, if I find out later that that Kid of the Week said a certain person's bed was made, and then it really wasn't, Well, now he or she is responsible for making it. So that's the uh, system I have in place for bed checks. All right, so then breakfast. So I know breakfast is not in the get ready chant, but it's what comes next. So we'll touch here for a second. Um, During breakfast, we do morning time. If you don't know what morning time is, I'll link to that in the show notes too. And this is when the kids take their vitamins and supplements. So we try to get to the table by about 8, and we spend about 45 minutes there. After breakfast, it is time to do teeth, face, hair, deodorant, zone. So for teeth, um, floss, brush, rinse is the chant within the chant. Now, this is a tough one. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat this. Uh, Our outside-the-box kids... If they have sensory challenges, fine motor delays, focus issues, this is really a struggle here. So we have had the most success using intrinsic motivations like special toothbrushes, toothpaste, rinse, flossers of their favorite flavor um, instead of regular floss. We've done first me, then you, and then first you, then me, depending on the child in the season. We've had natural consequences for not getting sugar that day if they absolutely refused to brush because we told them we just had to protect their teeth. Uh, We've accepted a child just putting the brush in their mouth without toothpaste and doing a quick brush if the sensory challenges were overwhelming. We want to encourage effort and not demand perfection. When they were younger, we had some success with the Oral-B app. Uh, We've sung songs, we've bought toothbrushes with timers, and for many years we stood behind the child and did it for them. So to know how much help your child really needs in this area, ask your dentist and pay attention to your child's handwriting. So if it's still sloppy, then he probably needs help brushing. Uh, You really want to avoid artificial rewards and punishments and control battles here, Brushing our teeth is an essential part of life, so we need to get to the point where everybody feels, even if not warm and fuzzy about it, um, at least peacefully accepting. (laughs) Okay, and after uh, you brush teeth, then it's time for your face. So time to clean the toothpaste mess and make sure all the sleepies are out of your eyes. And for my older boys, this is where 
face wash and shaving comes in. One day my little girl will put a touch of makeup on at this point too, although I just cannot even bear to think of her being that big at this time. But for little ones, this is usually just a splash of water and rub and towel off. All right, hair. Again, I teach them in the very beginning and then I let them own this area of their life. I make suggestions sometimes. I offer to help them, especially for my daughter who's young and has really long hair. I buy them what they might need. So if it's gel or hairspray or fun bows or clips, but otherwise I'm hands off. Deodorant. If you are not in this season yet, trust me, you will know when you arrive. Uh, Nobody wants to be the stinky kid. And it's our job as moms to prevent that. So my advice when you're trying to move into this direction with your your tweens and teens, um, just keep things light and humorous. Uh, But be sure to respect your pubescent child who may be very sensitive to all these changes that are taunting him. And then zone. Okay, this is essentially chore time, but a bit cooler. So I wrote a whole post, and I believe I did a podcast episode on zone work. So I'll link to that in the show notes. But the key with zone work, again, is ownership. I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. Uh, Our job as moms is largely to work ourselves out of a job. So when we train our children to care for themselves, it not only gives them feel-good emotions about being, you know, becoming a self-sufficient adult, but it also takes things off of our never-ending to-do list. So it really is a win-win. Now, there's a caveat here. Keep in mind that your child might not be ready for this step yet. So if you're in a particularly challenging season, I would suggest that you focus your efforts on therapy. So like either the Sunrise Program, which... I will link to, or one of our other favorite therapies, um, I will link to a complete list. But I I would focus there and on relationship building before you jump into self-care or even academics. All right, so the secret to staying on track in your day is to use your get ready time as a natural boundary. So I'm gonna tell you how this works. After we have breakfast and morning time, I will check our time and then announce, let's meet in the front room for group work at whatever o'clock. So whatever is usually around 945, but it can be earlier if we're really on it that day. Or let's be honest, the more typical is if we're running a little bit behind and we're slower. So the idea is rhythm and routine that flexes with your day and not a strict to the minute schedule that leaves you feeling perpetually behind. So I will set the timer and announce that means you have an hour or however long to finish getting ready. Here's the key. Whatever time left is theirs. If they finish early, no, you do not start group work early. They get to have that time to go outside or build Lego or play dolls. The natural consequence of being prompt is that you have more margin in your day. The opposite is true as well, though. So if they lollygag around that whole hour, then group work still begins when the timer goes off. And when everybody else is done with their work, the dawdler has to finish getting ready before he has any free time that day. So ownership, again, have I said it enough, is key. So you are not training them to have you follow them around and tell them what to do. You are equipping them to be independent people who are able to get themselves ready for the day no matter how long it takes. And I don't just mean no matter how long it takes in the morning, I mean no matter how many years it takes for this to become a habit for them. Because I will say we've been doing this for years, literally, and I still have uh, one of my (laughs) precious sons will still look at me bewildered, like, what are we supposed to be doing? And so, you know, that's, that's where the chants are helpful. That's where the timers are helpful. Um, your job is just to show up and be faithful, okay? And, and pray like crazy that by the time they leave your home, if that is God's plan for them, that they will be able to get themselves dressed and out the door in the morning. And I guarantee they will. But that is going to happen in their time. So just just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep having the same routines and rhythms and 
one day it might just all click. But be patient because it could take way longer than you think it should. All right, so get ready is the beginning of the Monopoly board for us. So if you've played Monopoly, you know you do not pass go, you do not collect $200, you do not move forward until it's done, right? So as I stated, school lessons don't apply to this, neither do meals or getting outdoors. Um, those are essential. So they happen ready or not. But any non-essential things like hanging out with friends, playing at the park, visiting neighbors, screen time, if you do screen time, um, typing on the computer, making a, no a stop motion video, looking up stuff online, getting out the paints, going roller skating, taking stuffed animals outside for a picnic, pretty much anything that your child would choose to do in his own time begs the question first, are you ready for your day? So on days that I don't do this, because <gasps> gasp, there are days I, I just don't do this. Um, and we are sure to get violently off track. So we really need a few key pillars in our day to stay headed in the right direction. And I've noticed that this specific pillar is a make or break one for us. We can skip morning time without much consequence, except we miss all those lovely readings. Um, but in terms of routine, we really, really need this one in place. Or the next thing you know, it's lunchtime and we've accomplished nothing. Now, some days that's fine. In fact, some days, like on a perfectly warm and sunny spring day, uh, I purposely skip group work in favor of being outdoors. And if you don't know what group work is, I know I've said it a few times, that is the next episode. So um, if you're in the future, then you can just skip to that next episode. But if you're listening to this when I air it, it's not recorded yet. So um, group work is just a time where we meet again and we do like history and Bible and geography and memory work together. Um, okay, but I digress. Uh, so if I know that it's not going to happen, like if I know we are going to skip group work in favor of being outdoors, then I don't set the timer. I don't make an announcement. Um, or a, a lot of times I will grab our group work and head outside. So sometimes I'll just par it down. If it's, um, I might just grab a couple books that we're reading at the time and just take those outside and read from them. Uh, homeschool is quite mobile after all, so you can take it with you. When the timer goes off, I just call them out to the table or couch outside and it's a way easier transition because they know as soon as we're done, they can go right back to playing. So this is an example of faith over formula in your homeschool. So when you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you can better decide if it's the kind of day where you need to stick with the plan or alter the plan. So that is getting ready. That's all the nuts and bolts of our habit, our homeschool rhythm of getting ready. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, you can either leave one on Facebook or on this podcast um, and let me know, is this a big part of your day? Is this one of your make or break habits that keeps your homeschool running smoothly? Or if it's not, what is? So I will talk with you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to Homeschooling Outside the Box. If you are loving the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. This is a great way to help other moms just like you find encouragement in their homeschool with their outside the box child as well. For more encouragement, be sure to head to cindyrenna.com and you can check out some great blog posts as well as a shop that will help equip you on your homeschooling journey.